Hi, this is Ryan from Clovis Star Media. It's January 6, 2014. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had technology that you could analyze, for example, a State of the Union speech from our president, or a campaign speech, a campaign promise, a campaign ad. If you could digitally analyze the authenticity, the truthfulness, you know, the deception value of these, you know, videos or, or speeches, um, or conversations that you have, possibly with your politicians, possibly with other people, uh, to know if they were telling you the truth. I've made several videos on these. I'll link them at the bottom um, about this technology that is coming out. And there is a lot of technology related to this. Um, you can see here on Wiki, just a, a short list of them. And this isn't even all of them. Um, this right here, Cognitive Polygraph, is showing a lot of promise. Um, facial EMG, yeah, it's interesting. Um, but this fMRI, that one is, is very interesting to me. Uh, it analyzes blood flow in the brain and things like that. Anyway, there's a lot of things going on with this. And I've made a video just a few days ago. Um, actually, it's on the 28th of December uh, 2013 about this. And I made a couple in 2011 as well about what if we had, and this was before I knew about this, but what if we had something that you could... Plug into your television, plug into your phone, plug into something, you know, technologically related that would produce such a speech or that would um, recite such a speech or something like that or analyze a conversation. And I said, you know, what if it was like a little tricorder like on Star Trek that you could just be like beep, 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 beep and analyze something? Well, this is it. Now, I don't suspect this is 100% accurate. In fact, I don't even think they claim is 100% accurate, but it's something that I just got in the mail and I wanted to show it off right here. See, so, you know, if somebody is lying, if they're stressing a voice, no, it's not necessarily if somebody's lying, but this is a stress analyzation tool. And if somebody is stressed and they're not telling the truth um, because of stress, then this will analyze that. And there's a lot of ways to beat lie detectors, and this isn't 100% accurate, so I'm not claiming that it is. I just think that it's interesting. Um, you can plug it into your phone with this gadget that came with it. Just a little 3 millimeter plug for your phone. Um, it plugs into this side, and then it plugs into your phone, and you can analyze conversations. You can analyze videos that you're possibly playing on YouTube. Um, you know, or, you know, speeches that you have on your computer. You can plug it into your little jack, your little output jack, and uh, it will analyze it. Um, so check my attention before having an interview. Check the truthfulness of a person. Check the interests of a person. Check the emotions of a person. Uh, it, it's interesting. Like I say, I don't believe that it's 100% accurate. Um, I don't think there's any technology that is. But I think we're getting close. I really do. And as a journalist, as somebody who's been doing journalism, so when I left the Mormon church, it was uh, the year 1999, I got my name removed from the Mormon church records. I'm a generational Mormon or descendant of a generational Mormon. Um, I was born into the Mormon church and I left it. Um, I found it wasn't for me. And I made a big stand against it. And I made the website BehindZionCurtain.com. And you can go there still. I still own the website. It's changed a lot. In fact, the database has had to be redone several times because the database got so large. So right now it's, it's you know, a fraction of the website that it used to be. Um, I also did Utah Pirate Radio starting in 2006. I did that for a couple of years. I still have a lot of my YouTube videos up from that site. Um, and uh, that was to criticize Mormonism, the backdoor dealings of the Mormon church with the city council of Salt Lake, uh, what was going on with the Main Street Plaza, things like that. I did interviews. Um, I broadcast in a local pirate radio station. Um, and then I started Sensi Life Radio in 2010, sensilife.com. Um, and I did a lot of cannabis activism, ending prohibition, uh, talking about my story. I served eight months for simple possession when I was a teenager. Uh, I was 19 years old. Um, I had Class B misdemeanor simple possession in Utah. Uh, served on three different tickets. A total of almost nine months. It was a little over eight months uh, in three different jails. And uh, so that was Davis County, Utah County, and Juab County. 
Um, and you can still look up FOIA information about that. I, you know, I wasn't arrested for anything large. It was just a couple of grams of weed and I served a lot of time for it. Um, I watched my dad and my grandma die of cancer. I realize now that cannabis cures cancer. So that's a big uh, topic for me. And so I like to vet my information as truthful. I like to prove that what I'm saying is honest and sincere and truthful. And I've always wanted a device like this Truster that, you know, is, is 100% accurate, hopefully. You know, I mean, that would be the, the goal, the ultimate goal, is to get something that's 100% accurate. But um, it is a good concept. And so I had to buy it just to test it. And there's a lot of other, you know, technology out there. Insurance companies use software to analyze uh, claims and, you know, claimants and what they say. And I want to get some of that. And I want to test a lot of this stuff. Um, but a lot of the things that I hear, you know, it's either com competitors, people who, like, I, we did t-shirts for a while. And we've done radio for a while. And so I've heard from competitors, oh, this guy is this, oh, this guy is that. They have no proof. There's no discovery evidence. There's no FOIA information to prove that I'm this or I'm that. Um, just assumptions or fear or, you know, rumors to discredit me. Um, I've heard from my family, you know, how I was mean and violent or whatever, uh, you know, uh, siblings. And, and, you know, what's funny is my, my brother died. My brother Justin died at a young age. It's not funny that he died, but it's funny uh, that they would say that because all of his stuff that he wrote in school, he wrote a lot of it about me and my other brothers, talking about how well we get along, how we never fight. I still have that information. I'd be happy to go to a polygraph tester and, you know, testify that it is his that it did belong to him, that it was his words, and that we get along just fine. But now, you know, I've turned on the Mormon church. I'm, I'm against the Mormon church. So now I hear things that are not true. Um, you know, for a while I was very anti-gay. I've changed my mind on that. Um, I've never thought the government should interfere with marriage. I've never thought that. But, you know, for a long time I, I you know, was confused about, you know, this guy. First of all, this guy that my cousin was with turned out to be a rapist, and he was gay or bisexual. And when I was 12 and he was like 20, he would be very sexual with me. He would say very sexual things and, you know, approach me in a very uh, hostile way sexually. And so it scared me from homosexuality. And then I learned about, you know, the AIDS epidemic, how, you know, it's more prominent with gay males than any other group of people, heterosexual or gay. You know, gay males have a, a higher... Um, contagion of that than any other group. And so that scared me. But, you know, so I've, I've had some feedback from people who are gay or who are sympathetic to the gay lifestyle saying that I'm hateful because I've had views like that in the past. But, you know, if you look at my videos from Utah Pirate Radio, you'll see that when Proposition 8 came out back in 2007, 2008, I was one of the biggest proponents against it. I was fighting for the ability for gays to get married and against what they were doing with Proposition 8. Um, I was a friend, and I always have been as far as that front's concerned. I don't think the government has any business in marriage. But I get feedback. I get flack from that. Uh, my Christian points of view. I know this guy, Dennis Ford, uh, had this debate with me, and it was like he was debating a different person. You know, it's like he was debating a guy that goes to church every day and, you know, has some sort of calling in the church. And uh, that's not me. I mean, I haven't even been to church in like, I don't know, nine or ten years. And I'm certainly not dogmatic. I don't think the, the Bible is 100% perfect. And I don't think Christianity is the only way to God. But he was treating me as if, though, that's who I was. And after the argument, I mean, he was just trying to offend me. I blocked him. And uh, for years after that, I've heard people that know him say horrible things about me that aren't true. And so I've always wanted something to be able to vet that information and, you know, discredit it because it's not true. And I'd like something scientific to be able to analyze that. So that's another reason why I got this this uh, device right here. And then I see things like this from Jeremy Miller and Christy Great Banks Miller. And I guess this guy right here got, uh, not this guy, but I guess this might have been the guy that got killed. But apparently one of the guys that was associated with these people started um, spreading false rumors about them. And uh, had apparently threatened Kitty uh, in person, in her face, threatened her. Um, and, uh, you know, just said a lot of horrible things about him. And now he's been found to be this murderer. They've just arrested this guy who's been spreading all these horrible rumors about him. 
And then, uh, you know, uh, Steve Elliott, who used to do Toker the Town, uh, but he got fired, I guess. He, you know, kind of got rough with his girlfriend and had some controversial issues, so he got fired from his job. But after he got fired, he started spreading rumors about Jeremy and Kitty, saying they were snitches. He had no proof. He had no sources. He just started saying that. He's like, oh, you know, from a friend of a friend, I heard that these guys were snitches. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing happens so often in the cannabis movement and in other movements, you know, other activist movements, you know. And so I always say, you know, get FOIA information, get discovery information, vet your information, uh, you know, be careful of who you trust with the information that you're getting. And, um, you know, make sure you analyze the person who's giving you the information, whether they're credible or not. Um, you know, we've had a lot of different competitors, whether it be for radio, we do newspapers too. We have two newspapers, Clovis Star and HD Trading Post, and we've had a t-shirt company. And, uh, a lot of people who are our competitors have came out with false information as well. So I would like to see this technology advance. It's going to advance whether I want it to or not, but I'm going to embrace it and I want to use it on my videos. I have probably out of all of my different YouTube accounts, I have like eight YouTube accounts I have probably 800 videos that I've made, and I want to analyze those technologically with this technology, you know, that's coming out for polygraph and, and lie detection. And uh, if for no other reason, for peace of mind, but if anybody has any questions about my integrity, I would like for them to listen to that and analyze it with some technology that's, you know, accurate and useful. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, I'll be posting more as we go. I'm going to be testing more technologies. So as soon as I've tested this and other technologies, I'll make videos about that. So thanks for listening. Um, January 6, 2014. This is Ryan at Clovis Star Media.